Okay, so Das American Atheist tagged me on this uh, portrait of an atheist thing, and originally I wasn't going to actually make a reply, but uh, then in chat uh, he said you know, he wanted me to, and if I didn't, it would make him a sad panda, and that just kind of broke my heart a little bit. And I, I sort of owe James a big one for his uh, uh, assistance with that uh, Designing Men and Women video, which has been a big success for both of us. Um, so uh, I feel I sort of owe him the reply since he asked for it. Um, normally I script my videos this time, I'm just completely shooting from the hip, so hopefully it'll be coherent and I won't ramble too much. Um, so he wanted to know my opinion on several issues, but the first thing I want to talk about, um, you know, the, the series is Portrait of an Atheist, but it might, this might surprise some people, I actually don't really identify as an atheist. I mean, I, I am an atheist, it's, it's a true description of me, I do not believe there is a god, um, but it's, that, that's not really how I think of myself. I'm also a eukaryote, but I don't really think of myself as eukaryote, I'm also a vertebrate, but that's not sort of part of my, my sense of myself. I mean, obviously it's true, uh, and it's important, but it's not uh, uh, how I visualize myself. Um, I, I, I think of myself primarily as an apathy. Uh, which is a term some of you might be familiar with. If, if you're not, the, the basic idea is uh, I, I just really don't care whether or not God exists. I don't think it makes a difference. I think that we live our lives the way we do pretty much regardless of whether or not God exists. Um, and, or at the very least, we should live our lives the way we do regardless of whether or not God exists. And I think most people, um, whether they believe in God or not, um, it actually does not have that big of an effect on their lives. Um, you know, I had a status on my YouTube channel a while back uh, that reflected this, you know, uh, e e even if there was no God, everyone would still love their children. Uh, that's what it comes down to. Um, uh, people are what they are, and God, at the end of the day, really has very little to do with it. Um, that's the, uh, and should have very little to do with it. So that's my position. I think it's uh, uh, actually, uh, you know, not just descriptive of me, I think it's actually descriptive of, of, of a lot of people. But, um, that's not the core of this video series, so I'll, I'll turn now to the topics at hand. So, um, topics I see apparently are abortion, capital punishment, drug laws, gay rights, and economics. What are my opinions on these things? Well, my opinion on abortion should be pretty clear. I've made several videos on the topic of abortion. Um, my, my basic thought is, you know, legally speaking, uh, no question, not only do I think that abortion should be legal, I think it should be uh, paid for by the government, I think should be fairly funded, um, uh, and I've just been completely unconvinced by any of the arguments on the other side. M morally speaking, though, uh, I admit it's a little bit more of a gray area. Um, I certainly think that it's abortion is uh, often uh, a, a vicious thing in, in certain contexts, um, and, and, and morally speaking should not be done in certain contexts, but, you know, the whole nature of it is it's a, it's a big gray area. Uh, you, know, so, you know, I think certainly very early term abortions um, no moral problems, you know, whatsoever. No more, uh, no, nothing morally complicated about, um, uh, you know, undifferentiated cells being uh, uh, expelled from the uterus. But at the same time, I think that uh, the uh, oftentimes sort of the you know, pro-choice side takes that a little bit too far. Um, and one of my favorite articles on the topic of abortion. Uh, from uh, Rosalind Hursthaus, uh, Virtue Ethics and Abortion, uh, makes the point that, you know, if, if, if the fetus has absolutely sort of no moral value whatsoever, then um, what does a person who believes that say to a woman who has a miscarriage and has, you know, uh, wanted the baby and, and was emotionally connected to it and is heartbroken, um, you know, would it really make sense to say, oh, hey, it's just like having your, your appendix removed, you know, you're just, you, you just had an organ uh, cut out, it's a no moral status. That would be really obviously a horrible thing to say. Um, so, you know, the, you know, I think a lot of the, the standard questions on abortion are misleading and, and uh, uh, I think it actually has very little to do with the moral status of the fetus and much more to do, you know, with uh, you know, the, the, the motivations and the circumstances and the context in which an abortion is uh, uh, taking place. Um, Okay, so that's abortion. Uh, capital punishment. I'm actually working on an article on capital punishment right now. Um, I have the, the, the primary body re written, but I still need to, to do uh, some, some empirical research on it. Um, and to, you know, to, I, I don't, I'll, if I, I, I might summarize that uh, paper later on, perhaps, if I feel like it. Um, but in short, um, I think I actually, I more or less agree with James. In principle, I see no problem with capital punishment. Um, you know, I, I don't believe that human life is so valuable that it absolutely must be respected in any and all circumstances, but at the same time, obviously, we should never be blasé about ending a human life. Um, but in, in point of fact, in practice, uh, the, the uh, capital punishment has proven to be uh, really a nightmare and really uh, um, poorly executed, pardon the pun, uh, in a lot of ways. And so uh, it's probably best to simply, uh, in the very least, scrap the system and start over um, rather than continuing on uh, with the way it's being administered now. 
Uh, drug laws. Um, I think they are by and large preposterous. This is actually something I agree with the Cato Institute on. You can have a drug-free America or you can have a free America. You can't have both. Um, you know, I, I believe in certain restrictions in the same way that we restrict, uh, you know, cigarettes and alcohol. Um, uh, there, there's, there should be, I think, you know, reasonable room for determining what the regulation should be in such a context. But uh, uh, by and large, um, it's no one's right at all to determine what I put into my body, and it's not my right to determine what you put into yours. Um, you know, that's a bit of an oversimplification, of course. There, there, you know, it's, that sort of creates this illusion that we're all sort of isolated individuals, and that we don't have overlap, and that we're not connected to other people in the way we are. Um, so it's it's more complicated than that. But that that is, I think, sort of my, my my core position. Every individual is sovereign over their own body, and they get to do with it whatever the hell they please, provided they don't uh, um, harm someone else in some way. Um, and that pretty much entails well into the topic of gay rights. Um, you know, I, I, I teach uh, all these topics in my uh, my ethics classes. Um, I've done research on them, um, and you know, I, I, I think they're, they're they're good arguments on on both sides of the abortion issue. There's good arguments on both sides of the capital punishment issue. Um, gay rights is one of those ones where uh, I really just think it's one sided. I, I do not see any any good arguments at all against gay rights. Uh, I can see no justification, not the slightest, for having any sort of legal distinctions between homosexuals uh, and, and heterosexuals. Uh, it seems to me just to be a complete hangover from a, uh, from a bigoted and prejudiced era. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I firmly hope and strongly believe that uh, you know, a few years from now, hopefully as few as 10, maybe 20 or 30, uh, but definitely it's by 50, we're going to look back on this and be just as a sh as equally ashamed with the way that we're dealing with homosexuals today uh, as we are now when we look back you know, 50 years ago to how, or even 150 years ago uh, to how we treated uh, African Americans and women um, and just the, the, the deplorable things that we did as a country, as a society to them. Uh, I think we're going to have that exact same kind of hangover when we look back on, on, on the topic of gay rights. Um, th there really are just no good arguments uh, against gay rights. Uh, okay, lastly, economics. Um, that one, i got to say, uh, I, I don't really see how that one fits um, for the simple fact that economics, you know, all, all those other topics on this list are moral, uh, moral applied topics. Uh, economics is an incredibly complex field in and of itself. Um, I don't really have a straightforward sort of, you know, a bumper sticker thing I can give on economics. Uh, um, I will say this much, though, I completely distrust uh, fundamentalists in economics as I distrust fundamentalists in, in virtually any other field, but especially religion. Uh, fundamentalist Marxists, fundamentalist libertarians, fundamentalist capitalists, anyone who wants to pick just sort of one single principle, or you know, be it liberty or equality or anything like that, and say this has to be championed and valued above all others, um, I think they're dealing with a, a, a general philosophical mindset that is painfully naive and very, very dangerous. Um, liberty is good. Equality is good, and obviously a reasonable economic system needs to, uh, to find room for and preferably maximize these things as much as possible. Uh, but to say that you know, simply one value needs to be cherished above all others in our, in our economic uh, uh, outlook um, is just stupid. I mean, we don't even do mathematics that way anymore. Um, again, I, I think I made one video on this earlier, actually, I, 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 in my response to Shane D.K. Um, you know, uh, mathematicians don't even uh, uh, start with sort of single core sets of principles uh, and then build the entire system onto such a single core of principles. Uh, uh, it hasn't worked uh, uh, ever in any sort of social circumstance, um, much less in uh, 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 something as pure in principle as something like, like math. Um, so what we need in economics is not ideologues, is not single systems, but rather robust, uh, 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 informed ideas that come from a broad spectrum of values and a broad spectrum of schools of thought uh, to create a mature, sophisticated, uh, and workable 21st century economy. Um, all right, I guess that's it for the list. Um, now I'm supposed to tag people, but you know what? Yeah. Ah, uh, fuck that. I, I, I'm not going to try to uh, pressure anyone into doing this. If they want to do it, th they can do it. I'm not going to uh, 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 be a vector for this uh, this meme. Um, but that's not to say I'm not interested in other people's thoughts and opinions on these topics. Uh, I certainly am. I've been enjoying watching other people make it. So if you think that you uh, have a, an interesting two cents to share, go ahead and spit it out there. Okay, hope that I wasn't rambling too much. Uh, again, thanks to James for, for tagging me on this. I hope you found it interesting.